Hey, I'm Anton Clifford. I'm an Atlanta quadriplegic actor, and I'm glad to be on this interview of this podcast with Stephanie. We're going to make it happen. Welcome to this ability clinic where sometimes we just roll with it. I'm your host, Dr. Stephanie Van. I really want to hear more about how did you get into acting? Is that something you've always wanted to do? Or is that something that you got interested in after injury? Like, yeah. tell me the story. Oh, yeah. I was DJing before, prior to actually coming home three o'clock in the morning. It, it's a whole different vibe. So I had to think of something else I can do. And I was going to physical therapy and I was like, yeah, I don't think I can do the DJ thing long term. So my friend, Michelle, I mean, I didn't tell her nothing about DJing, but she, I think she kind of picked up on how the DJing thing was going for me because <laughs> it wasn't really going the way I wanted it to go. And she, she would go to my shows and support me, but she was like, yeah, and so I think you should try acting. Mm. So I looked at her and I told her, uh, I said, no, nah, nah, I'm not acting. So she asked me again, she was like, Anton, I mean, why don't you just, come on, just come to a class. Let's try it. I said, no, again, I said, I'm not an actor. Nobody wants to see somebody in a wheelchair on TV. Even though I think I, I saw uh, Daryl Chill Mitchell, he's on NCIS and he plays, uh, he, he's been a reoccurring or series regular or whatever. He's doing his thing. And I mean, I saw him and I didn't see the need for somebody handicapped in the industry on TV at the time. I wasn't thinking on it. And then she asked me one more time. She's like, Anton, what are you doing with your life? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm dating. Uh, I'm going to physical therapy. I mean, I'm literally <laughs> got a lot doing, going what, on. I, yeah, I'm doing what I got to do. She's like, so what do you got to lose? Just sit in class and just come to class and see if you like it. Man, she really right. believed in you. Yeah, I don't know what she saw in me. <laughs> <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, I had a dream. I was like, you know what, Anton, you could really inspire somebody through this. Like, You can really use your situation. Cause the, I saw it in the industry was starting to open up to more disabled people too. My sister said, she was telling me too. She was like, yeah, they're not where they should be, but they're, they're, they're more open to it. You're unique. So you can bring something unique to the table. I started thinking to myself, I was like, yeah, it's, this is, this acting thing is bigger than me. Like I've only been acting, believe it or not, only two and a half years, which is crazy because the journey has been moving quick, 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 but I've really dedicated a lot of time and worked hard and made, I mean, have great people looking out for me and yeah. Not everybody's on their feet in real life. So, I mean, it makes sense to have somebody in a wheelchair on TV. I mean, not everybody's uh, weighs 140 pounds. So it makes sense to have people that are bigger on TV as well. Not everybody's straight. So it makes sense to have LGBT on TV as well. You got to be a diversity. Everybody has to be in the mix. I want to see everybody represent. I want to see everybody winning. That's how I think. People just need to see people that are, I mean, people that are disabled. We just have to get out there more and educate people. Like I said, I feel like television is the perfect way to do it. Like just seeing us represented more on television. I mean, stuff to show us just living a normal life, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I saw, like, I guess I met Brewster's ice cream and, and uh, this little four year old looks at me. He's like, you're in a wheelchair. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm in a wheelchair. Cool. He's like, so you think it's cool? You like, you like the wheels? I'm like, yeah, they're green. I'm like, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite color? He's like, green. Okay. Aww. Just that, just that interaction, you know? Yeah. Making it part of just everyday life. Like, it's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's not a tragic thing. It's not something to hide. I think that's the older yeah. narrative. We just need to get it into people's heads and see us more and they won't think of us more of an outcast until they, they start to see us on different platforms and different things. Kids, we got to start with the kids too because the kids, are, they get used to seeing us because I mean, I, I that's why I, I'm so glad I grew up watching, I don't know, you probably, I don't know if you grew up watching Barney, but. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. I, when I was a little, I didn't want to admit it, but I love Barney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, Barney would always bring blind kids and disabled kids onto set. Like, you would always, every once in a while, you would see an episode with a blind kid or a disabled person or a kid with Down syndrome. They would always have them on set. So, I mean, I, I got used to seeing that in Barney and Friends. So, and, he, and there was like one song where he was talking about, yeah, you know, bully people and, you know, Barney is friendly. It's all about love. Yeah. Positive <laughs> no, matter, no, matter who, no matter who you are, you get a hug and I love you. <laughs> We need to see that more on TV now. We need Barney back. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, I agree. it's funny because like a lot of people with disabilities, like they don't mind teaching children. Like they don't mind when children ask them questions because children are just naturally curious and they don't have that stigma, that bias. You know, they haven't learned that yet. But then when adults who, you know, unfortunately, adults can be very ignorant about disability. One of my other friends who's a wheelchair user, she's like, adults are just kids who didn't learn. Like they still need that same level of education. <laughs> That's a good point for putting it. Yeah, they are. Because, I mean, honestly, if I wasn't in a wheelchair and I, like, when I used to go out in public, I would look at people too, like, not in a bad way. I mean, I saw kids that were in wheelchairs and actually would talk to them. Not ask them what happened to them or anything like that, but I would just talk to them. And, I mean, just talking to them taught me how normal they are just like us. They're just people just like us. 
once yeah. you talk to somebody, interact with them more, you just start to realize that you you have so much in common. You have different besides your physical uh, disability. Yeah, and it's so tough because it's like, I don't know where it comes from, but I think it's this deep seated ableism in society, you know, going back throughout human history. If you're a person who grew up without people with disabilities around you, if you don't know someone who's close to you as a disability, it seems like this big, scary, like foreign thing, you know, because you're not familiar with it, the natural inclination is to be kind of scared of it or like shy away from it. Yeah, and they're scared to come out and ask you. I mean, they may look at you in public, like look at you like one way and then turn around and look at you again. And then you you look at them and they act like they weren't looking at you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Does that happen to you? (laughs) All the time, all the time. In the mall, like I'll look at somebody and then I'm I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I'll see, it may be a girl too. She might be looking at me and then I look at her. (laughs) And then she act like she wasn't looking at me. <laughs> well, you seem to have such like a positive, like, you know, carefree attitude when this can obviously be kind of like a sensitive thing or, you know, a not so comfortable thing when, when you know people are thinking whatever they're going to think and they don't know you. My mentality, I have to have this mentality too. And, I've, and it's just, it works for me is I don't see myself as like paralyzed mentally or anything like that. I look at it like there's there's people on their feet that are still paralyzed because they have whatever they, they're not chasing their dreams. Mm. I'm in a wheelchair and I'm still chasing my dreams. So I'm not really paralyzed in a sense of men- mentality. I still feel like I'm on my feet right now. I still feel like I'm six foot one. <laughs> I think that's a great attitude, like kind of metaphorically paralyzed by your own, like if someone limits themselves from their full potential, it doesn't matter what their physical abilities are. Right, exactly. So I start thinking about my limitations and everything. Of course, that's going to drive me crazy. And even when I have like a bad day or my body's not feeling good, I always remind myself that nothing lasts forever. And maybe a string of four days where I'm just, just autonomic dyslexia is bad on me. And then I may get an audition and I still got an audition with autonomic dyslexia because <laughs> the industry ain't no, is yes or no. <laughs> and yeah. if I say no, I might turn down the biggest audition of my life. And or maybe could turn into a big opportunity. So I'm not saying no to no auditions unless I'm on a stretcher. <laughs> Even if I'm on a stretcher, I might find Okay, yeah, you gotta take care of yourself at some point. <laughs> the best part I ever got is my first role on Queen Sugar. And that was uh how that audition process went was it was just crazy. <laughs> like it's just crazy how just everything just transpired all at in a blink of an eye. So shout out to Robert Prago, my acting coach, I mean one of the closest people in the industry to me, my mentor. He helped me get that role of Queen Sugar. And the next day, she was like, well, they want, they want to hire you. I'm like, what? So what's next? What's next? Oh, COVID testing. So I got to go to the studio right now in Atlanta and do COVID testing. She was like, well, you need to book your flight to New Orleans. Wait, I said, this is filmed in New Orleans? I didn't know where it was filmed. <laughs> well, at least it was, like, not that far, I guess. Yeah, our flight. Not that bad, but just the whole. Wow, it does sound like it happened really fast. Yes, I'm telling you, like, I, within an hour, I was on a flight to New Orleans. You talk to a lot of actors for their first role. They don't get a major television role like that for their first role ever. So I felt the pressure. I really did feel the pressure. I'm like, oh, I hope I don't go out set and just <laughs> crash. Because, I mean, like, what? It, it's all new to me. I'm so sorry this happened to you. It's not right. So, I mean, I go there. And I'm, I'm looking at the planes the whole time. Like, yeah, this is Oprah behind this. This is for own network. This I'm going to be on set with Rotina Wesley from True Blood. Like, she's the lead actor of a whole uh, Queen Sugar. She plays a character named Nova. I'm like, they put me in a scene with her. It's evil. You think I'll forget the cost faces who did this to me? I'm like, hope I don't crash. hope I don't crash. hope Anton, Anton, get this together. You're, you're, about to, <laughs> you're about to be under a lot of pressure. That's a lot of exciting things happening so quickly. Have you had any sort of not-so-fun aspects of being an actor uh, and being quadriplegic in this industry? Well, I mean, I, honestly, I, I always felt respect from every set that I've gone on. Like, and they've always gone above and beyond to help me, which I've had problems. Like, even when I was at Queen Sugar, like, they put me in a wheelchair accessible place because they know, for the most part, my wheelchair can't go into a trailer. So they always put me in a room or a hotel or they make accommodations for me. And they have somebody always making sure I'm okay, like a nurse on set, just to make sure that I'm not, I guess, overdoing it, which I, I don't have that problem. I'm in shape, so... <laughs> Try to tell them, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't take this thing lightly. Oh, That's really, really good though, that they're giving you, giving you that support and just in case you need those kinds of accommodations, that really sounds like that wasn't like a surprise to them. Like, oh, we got to get ants on this stuff. It's like, oh, they were used to 
Yeah, providing those services. Crazy too. It was crazy. When I met them, they knew about like my condition already. Like some of them on set, I guess they may have relatives that are quadriplegics or paralyzed or have some form of disability. So, I mean, they knew, but I mean, what really got me was going on set for Queen Sugar when one of the uh, guys that works on set, George Bott, after they did the costumes, they put the costume on. He was like, Anton, do you want to keep your costume on? Uh, I said, why? I mean, you said you're about to do rehearsal. So I said, okay, um, yeah, I mean, what, what, what's, what's the difference if you keep your costume? He's like, yeah, I mean, sometimes I work with Jamie Foxx, and Jamie Foxx likes to keep his costume off. <laughs> so I said, oh, man, this is this is intense. So like, yeah, I'll pull a Jamie Foxx, yeah, thank yeah, you. So I, guess, I guess I'll keep my costume on all day. So I'll do rehe- <laughs> I did rehearsals with my costume, and after I did the rehearsal, rehearsals were supposed to be like an hour. Me and Rutina went out there, and we did it two times, and the director was like, damn, we should have shot that. She's like, okay, get up, get up the camera crew and get and set up everything. So I watched them set up all the equipment, cameras up there, cameras up there, cameras up there, and, and my chest started racing more and more. I was like, oh man, this is really real. Because they locked, they shut down the whole French Quarter Square in New Orleans to film that. <laughs> That's a big deal. That's like yeah, a busy yeah. area. A very busy area. Like I'm, I'm looking like, oh my gosh, like this is. I mean, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm like, oh, this is. I can't even believe I'm here. <laughs> And I'm gonna be, I, I, and I think I look at it too because I feel like if I could, if I go in there and mess up, I'm messing up for other disabled people that are trying to come into the industry too because they're gonna classify us as like, yeah, yeah. I mean, Anton, we gave him a chance, so maybe other paralyzed people can't handle this as well. So I try, I try to train just as hard as everybody else, if not harder, and try to stay on top of my game all always because I know I'm representing a lot of disabled actors, a lot of disabled people in general. So I want us to get more opportunities in the industry. What what have been some of your favorite representations of disability in the media? Like, do you have people that inspire you? I mean, of course, Christopher Reeves. To me, he's the big he's the big guy out there. He played Superman. He went on and I think he directed a couple of things afterwards. He did motivational speeches. And I remember seeing it like uh, before I was even paralyzed, seeing like a documentary on him, how he carried on with life. I mean, he was a quadriplegic, too. He was on. He used the sipping puff chair in which I ended up using for the first year I was paralyzed. I was totally paralyzed from my neck down for the first year. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't move anything below my neck except my head. So I used the same straw that Christopher Reeves used to move my wheelchair And when I was in high school, my senior year. Because I, I, I knew about the uh, device when I first they first gave it to me at the Shepherd Center. So I was like, oh, wow, this is what Christopher Reeves used. I mean, I wasn't excited to use it because I'm still paralyzed, but still, I'm like, this is crazy. I'm actually using the same device that Christopher Reeves actually used. So I think, I mean, as far as like paving the way, he did. And then I have my close friends, like their mentors, Eileen Gruba. She's doing her thing. Like she's she's done a lot in the industry. She's paid, she's been in it and she's been turned down from so many auditions just because of her disability. Now she's getting more and more and more looks, which is amazing. She's a good mentor to me. And my, my good friend, Tobias Forrest, he's been in a lot of stuff, guest stars, like how to get away with murder. And he calls me and gives me good advice and especially coming from him he's a quadriplegic as well so he can give me advice on how to maneuver in the industry and like how to keep yourself sane you know yeah it's tough like because i can imagine obviously the industry i think it's starting to get better like i think hollywood is realizing oh it's good to represent all different types of bodies all different kinds of people um but it's taken a long time for that perspective to be more accepted, which is really frustrating. What sort of some of the more valuable pieces of advice you've gotten from your mentors in navigating the industry as an actor with a disability? Well, Eileen always tells me too, like she's always telling me like, instead of saying like going out there, making a scene about us not having as many opportunities, you show it through your work, why we should add these opportunities. Like, she's like, you don't have to make a big scene. You just do it through your work. And I mean, I and I was, I kind of been on the same page as her. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to go out there and say, oh, yeah, we need these. But I'll show them that we can do what everybody else can do through the work. You put in the work at the same, same time. And you can, can continue to bring authentic performances to the screen. And I mean, continue to do what everybody else does in the industry and do it even better. Like, do it, do it in your own way. Bring your uniqueness. And Tobias tells me to just keep doing what I'm doing, too. The same thing. To keep training and. I mean, we don't make excuses. Like, I mean, we just have to continue to stick on the craft. Like, he told me to continue to just work above, go above and beyond. Mm-hmm. And just be, a, he said, be a nice person on set. You're friendly with everybody. Continue to do that and uh, open doors. You don't want to be an angry guy in a wheelchair. You don't want to be that. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy because we have, we have enough of us out there already. And shout out to those people right there. <laughs> <laughs>
It's tough. It's tough because there's a lot of bitterness. There's a lot of frustration because of stigma and just lots of barriers and lack of accessibility. That's historically been a huge problem. And thank goodness, like I think we're living in a really exciting time, like our generation, particularly where we're most open to different types of people from all different backgrounds. Um, so there's a lot more doors that are open. There's a lot more opportunities. And hopefully moving forward, the only thing people need to do, no matter you know, with their ability level, their skin color, their gender identity, whatever, if they're doing the work and they're showing their passion, like that is finally getting recognized without the least amount of bias, hopefully so far in the world. So, yeah. And uh, the thing I love about my agent, like my agent, Barbara and Natalie for Align Stars, I talk to them and I tell them, like uh, we had a discussion that they submit me for roles that are not just written specifically for handicapped characters which we had a discussion and like, they're open to it. Like I most of the stuff I auditioned for not even written for handicapped people. And I booked some roles that like the thing I booked with NBC, it wasn't written for a handicapped character. It wasn't written for, I mean, even the role that I played, wasn't written specifically like that. I mean, I auditioned for something else and ended up writing me in as a character, which is cool, a name and everything. But yeah, yeah. So the industry is now open to like saying like, they want me to play a lawyer or something like that. They're, they're going to open like, oh, yeah, he doesn't have to be a disabled lawyer. He's just a lawyer. He's just anti or he's a lawyer, whatever the character's name, and he's a lawyer. Because we are lawyer, we we are doctors in real life. So that needs to be uh, represented on television as well. So that's what I like about the industry where it's going right now. It's not just looking like, oh, yeah, I could play in a Marvel movie. I could play an FBI mm -hmm. agent in a wheelchair. I could play a detective in a wheelchair. I could be a, yeah. uh, I've auditioned for some crazy things like that. I, I wouldn't think they would even audition me for. And probably maybe 10 years ago, they probably wouldn't audition me for those. They probably audition me for a guy in a chair that's always going to file a lawsuit or something like that. Yeah. And like maybe not even a speaking role. I feel like 10 years ago, all the roles of people using wheelchairs were played by able-bodied people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely that, too. That's why, I, that's why I'm so grateful for Eileen and Tobias, because they came into the industry a long time ago where they weren't, weren't given as many opportunities as, as I'm, I'm given right now. Like, and they paved the way for me to be able to do what I'm doing right now. If it weren't for them, I would never, I mean, I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. I came into the industry at the right time. Like my coach, Robert Prado, we had this discussion. He always tells me, he's like, Anton, you started acting at the right time. Because you start acting when they're looking for diversity. You see more Asian actors, you see more black actors. Mm -hmm. And I'm black and I'm in a wheelchair. So that's a different, that's two different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever made me want to get into it. I mean, I, I feel like nobody, you are where you are, you're meant to be. So everything, what's for you is going to be for you at the end of the day anyway. So I see myself getting an Oscar one day. I mean, I see myself paving the way for other disabled people. I feel like it's coming. I see myself on set with Will Smith, Will Smith and Denzel and Michael B. Jordan and all those guys. Chris, uh, Chris Pratt. I mean, Samuel Jack. I see myself working with all of them soon. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, well, I think that should be the standard now. It's like, yes, like we have a caliber of actor that is completely untapped because the industry wasn't really recognizing talent because of this stigma against disability and I, I am very very glad that's going away you have a like a dream type of role or dream project that you envision for yourself in the future yeah i would love to play in a marvel and i think that's gonna happen soon but uh yeah i i would love to play in a marvel and i would love to play like a role that like something that inspires people a very inspirational story like a deep deep story i mean of course i want to be in a series eventually I mean, written into a series where you can just play that character for maybe three or five years or even longer, like something like Blackish or something like that, where you can just be in, it, be in there and just, yeah, yeah, I want to play that. Those type of iconic roles like I mean, detective or lawyer or I mean, something that's powerful that's going to move people. I can go to my grave happy if that happens. If I would not, love to see you in something like that. <laughs> if not, I can just haunt the world. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed this interview. Like, I really appreciate you bringing me through. Thank you so much for tuning into this conversation with me and Anton. We hope you enjoyed listening in. And if you want to hear more conversations like this, hit the like button and subscribe to this Ability Clinic for more entertaining and accessible educational content. Go hey, for I'm it. Anton, hey, I'm oh, Anton sorry. Clifford. Hey, I'm Anton Clifford. You're, you're watching Disability Clinic.